This is a Red FM Vancouver podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe for more great content. For further info, log on to redfm.ca. Mr. Earl, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. I was talking to Mr. Davies uh, yesterday. He was um, very insistent that the data should be maintained and the long-haul truckers going to USA must be tested. What do you think? Well, it's interesting. And one of the things that we have heard from companies and from drivers right from when this started uh, is they would like to have the ability to test, um, to be able to know if they have uh, COVID-19, uh, to know how they, uh, what they have to do to protect their families and, uh, and protect their co-workers and protect their customers. So um, when we started to hear calls for more testing, um, that's a positive thing uh, because at this point we can figure out and know uh, and truck drivers can get the service uh, that they've been asking for for a long time. So what issues um, long-haul truckers have? It's really difficult to know exactly because getting a test is not nearly as difficult now as it was a couple of months ago. Um, I mean, really, it was a, a very, very rare event for someone who wasn't in a, uh, a certain population to get a test. But now, if an individual, if you or I or anybody uh, has symptoms, uh, we can get tested. Um, so it's not so much the availability of the test. The question becomes, what do you do when you're waiting for the results? What do we do uh, when we get positive tests back? Um, so those are things that we have to be thoughtful of. Um, the drivers going back and forth across the border, um, I think what's really interesting is the general public finally sees them. They finally understand the important work and the critical work that these drivers have done for so many years. Uh, and it's good to see that uh, we're finally getting that uh, that recognition. Um, so what this looks like and how it gets done uh, is going to be really important. Um, but the idea that drivers would be able to access more tests, um, that's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Well, um, truck drivers in other provinces have brought coronavirus from United States. Do you have any numbers how many British Columbia truck drivers have been infected of coronavirus who are going to United States? I don't. And that data, I'm not even sure if it exists. Um, I do know when there is a positive test uh, that the provincial health office does contact tracing. So they will actually go to the person who tests positive and put them through a lot of questions and then talk to anybody that may have come in contact with them for the previous two weeks. I don't know if they're breaking that down by industry, um, but what I do know um, is some data that's in with WorkSafe BC. Um, some people that have um, have got COVID and have become disabled because of it, not staying home because they have symptoms but are actually sick or in hospital, um, they have applied for workers' compensation. Um, the total number of claims that have been applied for in BC so far is about 500. Mm-hmm. Um, because the vast majority of people who are disabled from this disease aren't working. They're, they're long-term care facilities. Um, but of those 500, uh, 10 have come out of transportation and warehousing. So that's not just truck drivers, that's everybody. That's truck drivers, bus drivers, uh, warehouse workers, dispatchers, everybody. So there's been a total of 10. So it's really, really low numbers. Uh, do you think it will create some kind of uh, discrimination against the long-haul truckers if they are picked out of the crowd for testing? And even if they get um, tested and they come positive, then do you think other people will kind of uh, start looking down upon? That's a hard question, and I, and I don't know. Um, what I what I hope will happen is that you know we, we look at this as an industry, as a positive thing. Um, because we're able to get the answers. I mean, for so long uh, since this started, we've all wanted to know, do I have it? You know, am I sick? Am I at risk? So that's a good thing. Um, when we look at, at uh, drivers themselves, I mean, is, is the general public going to look at them and think, oh my gosh, they're, they're a problem? 
I don't think so, um, because, you know, I think the public understands that without them, uh, without these drivers doing this essential work, uh, you and I aren't able to live our lives. Um, this is absolutely critical work that these folks do, um, and the respect that they, they deserve is very similar to the respect um, that any essential worker deserves. So um, I don't think they're gonna, we're going to have that. Um, at least I certainly hope not. Are you in favor of uh, having um, drive-through testing centers at the border? See, that's a really good question, and we just don't have the technology yet. So um, we certainly could. I mean, in terms of doing that, um, there would be a minor disruption to the supply chain as long as it's done uh, in a quick and efficient manner. Um, it could happen, but I don't know what the value of that would be for the public health officers. That's really a, a public health decision. Um, you know, when we look at it and what's being discussed is the ability uh, for drivers to get tested uh, regularly and basically on demand. Um, so I haven't heard any discussions around that, but ultimately, um, if it gives us more answers and more information and helps drivers be safe in what they're doing and keeps their families safe, that's not a bad thing. Uh, how about these um, ICBC road tests? Are they affecting the truck drivers in any way? A lot of drivers are ready to give the test, but they're not taking it because of COVID-19. Any progress made? Are you impacted by this? Yeah. So a couple of things. Uh, are we impacted? Absolutely. Um, the, the impact of the pandemic on trucking has been really uneven. Some companies are doing absolutely fine. Um, they're operating as they were in terms of volumes and business. Um, other companies have shut down. Um, and gone out of business. It just, it depends on what your customer base was. Um, but what's happened, of course, is as we headed into this crisis, we had a driver shortage. That hasn't changed. Um, there's still a lot of people out there waiting to do the road tests to get licensed. There are still companies that are looking to hire drivers. So there's a big pent up demand. Uh, we anticipate an announcement from ICBC very shortly about when they're going to restart the road test program, uh, when tests are going to be able to be built, uh, to be booked. Um, we should have that information very, very shortly. Uh, Mr. Dave Earl, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Dave Earl, uh, British Columbia Trucking Association, the president of the CEO Hun. Thank you for listening to another Red FM podcast. Don't forget to hit subscribe and check out our Red FM Canada YouTube channel. For further info, log on to our Red FM social media platforms or visit redfm.ca. Red FM.